Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. This is gonna be a video about setting up QImage for printing. Printing what? Printing your images. Now, if you do not want to use QImage for your basic editing, of course, it's better to use something like Photoshop, Lightroom, or Photoshop Elements. Let's take you over to the desktop view and I'll take you to the steps that I use to perform this operation. All right, so here we are in front of Q image. And as you can see, I just basically have a few images here. We'll go ahead and look at my downloaded images and we'll pick one to print. We'll let them load. There's quite a few in there, so it'll take a little bit of time for it to load. And here we are. So basically you would simply take an image and bring it right over to your layout. If you're gonna print another one, bring it right over to the layout and bring it right over to the layout and you have a layout of three five by sevens so let's just say that you simply want to make one single image well wait a minute i thought you said that we were going to use photoshop yeah let's go ahead and use photoshop we'll come back here and perform all of this when we finish editing our actual image in photoshop we'll remove all of that we'll minimize in fact we can just go ahead and turn that off close it completely now I'm here in Photoshop with one of my raw images taken with a Nikon D3300. And so I opened up the raw image in the raw editor and I am ready now to export it out to Photoshop. Now one thing that you can do is click here and choose what the size of the output that you want, the color space that you want the output to be, and so on. So we'll just leave everything at the default setting. I have set at Adobe RGB 1998, by the way and we can change that to a 16-bit if we wish. That'll give us a little bit more bit rate to the image. Now, when it goes over to the printer, it may go back to 8-bit, but if you begin with a 16-bit image out of a raw file, you will actually end up with a slightly better result. So we don't want to reduce the quality right there and then. We want to go ahead and wait until we are done editing. And here is our image. Let's assume absolutely we are done with editing. We're going to send this directly over to QImage. Go to File, Automate, QImage Ultimate. Remember, I closed QImage. Now it's going to open it up and it's going to send this file with the edits that I performed on it directly over to QImage. Now let's go ahead and set up QImage for printing this particular image. And I have, out of my many printers, as you can see, many printers listed here. I have the Pro 1 chosen. Let's go ahead and pick the Pro 1000, just for fun. And of course, why would I use the Pro 1000 for a measly letter size print? Let's make this a nice, large 17 by 22 print. So that's the paper size that we will choose. Now we have to come up with some sort of layout. And so this is not the correct ratio for this paper size. So we'll set up a cell and then place that image in there, and make it fit completely. Prints, custom. This is where we can either set up a cell of specific dimensions or simply pick one of the dimensions. I like to pick the short dimension. So we have here 17 inches to play with. So I'll go ahead and make it say 15 inches. Specify one dimension. This is the short side, so it'll be on this axis here. We'll put in 15, and there we go. All right, so that is it. Now we have a cell that extends as high as it can up to the minimum border that the printer will insist you have. So you can see there's a slightly wider border at the bottom and a slightly less wide border on the top. All right, so we'll go ahead and bring it right over. And as you can see, it seems to fit quite well. If it did not, if this ratio did not kind of closely match this ratio here, you would have to click here. Auto cropping is on right now. You can turn it off and it will not crop the image. So right now this seems to be the happy situation here with this particular image because it seems to fit on that restricted border that I set up. All right, but that's more on the layout side of things. So we're not gonna concern ourselves with that in this particular video. We want to set this up correctly for printing. You still have to go into your printer's properties right here and set it correctly. We're going to pick our paper. Let's just say photo paper plus semi gloss, highest quality, 17 by 22, and click here. Now, this is something you have to do. Click on that color slash intensity manual adjustment. If you were allowing the printer driver to control color, then you can make manual adjustments here. 
You can make adjustments in contrast, brightness, global yellow adjustments, magenta and cyan adjustments, either plus or minus. So we're going to go to matching and then make sure we click none because we are going to be utilizing an ICC profile to print our image. So make sure that that is always set on off or none. And that is it. At this point, we are done with the printer settings. Oh, another thing I forgot to tell you. Make sure you have photo printing chosen here. Okay. We're going to go ahead and click here. You will get this window popping open. Click here on this little box. And we're going to go ahead and find our profile. So we're going to go ahead and look for our Canon series Pro 1000. And here we are. We need to locate the matching paper. Semi gloss, Canon Pro 1000. And in other countries, it is known as the Pro 500. Photo paper plus semi gloss. And we'll go ahead and hit open. And here's where you choose your rendering intent perceptual, relative colorimetric, saturation, absolute. We're going to also click on black point compensation. We don't want to block out any of the black tones. 16 bit and hit OK. That is it, folks. At this point, you can just go ahead and hit print and recheck your settings again if you must. But that is all you have to do. Let's go ahead and set up another scenario here. Let's go ahead and choose another printer. We'll choose the P800 just to give you a variety of uh, two types of printers. As you can see, I have it set for a multiple of smaller images, all of them correctly spaced. Basically, it is 17 by 24 size print, and we're popping in as many 5 by 7s as we can pop in with a border on them. But we don't really want to do that. Let's go ahead and pick something really nice and colorful like this ah wait a second oh man we forgot to change that five by seven print size so let's go ahead and erase that we're going to set it up i like to do things manually now you can actually choose presets here for instance a 16 by 20 and boom you got that down immediately printed nice big white border you can put your signature down here the name of the actual image here title signature date and you are good to go. This is the perfect way to print a fine art print. Now, most of the time I want to go ahead and choose a custom setting. So we'll go ahead and use the 15 inch setting and get a little bit more coverage of the paper. And as you can see, that fit perfectly. If I change it to my not cropping, it will then include all of the black space that may not be necessary. This is a better uh, resulting composition here. And go back. Now we're going to set the P800, hit properties. In this case, so let's just pick a common photo paper, photo paper luster, quality setting, and no color adjustment. Normally it will be set to Epson standard sRGB. You want to click on this little area here, off, no color adjustment. And that's what you need to do so that you can then go ahead and print using your ICC profile. All right, so we're going to click on the ICC profile box. There's this little tool box right here. Click on this little box right here as well. And then we'll go ahead and locate the Epson series P800. We'll locate our profile, matching profile, Premium Pro Luster. Click on that. Again, relative color metric for me. That's what I always use. Black point compensation. And of course, remember we set it to no color adjustment. That way we are not going to double profile when we then tell QImage to use this particular matching profile. It's either or. Either you let the printer manage color or tell QImage to manage color. Either way, you have to turn on color management in the driver or turn it off. And that is all you have to do. As soon as you hit the print button, the print job will be initiated and you should get a pretty good match between your monitor. Why? Because you have calibrated your monitor, and that is one of the most important steps that you can take in your photo printing at home career. So that is it. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video on QImage, how to basically set it up, how to use the export. So the same thing happens in Lightroom. You can export directly out of Lightroom, and then that way you don't have to export a file manually and then bring it into QImage manually and so on. It'll just automatically be brought into it. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And until the next time, as always, happy printing, everyone, and bye-bye.